Hey everyone, welcome Birds of a Feather. Today we've got a double bill for you. My good friend Rachel from across the pond is also doing a vanity mirror, so I do encourage you to go visit her at the end of this video. Hi, it's Rachel from Tea and Forget Me Nots. I'm really excited to be doing a collaboration with Sarah from Birds of a Feather this week. Please pop over to my channel afterwards and see what I do with this pine mirror. As for us, um, we're starting off with this beautiful Magnolia Garden Transfer. I've just got a piece of MDF here that I've primed with white and what I've done is I folded back a corner and I've just stuck it down to the edge to get my positioning. So now I can essentially lift that and start to peel back the backing and then I can just lay it right down. Now I think what I'm going to do is take this squeegee and just make sure that I'm off to a good start because if you start well you're going to end well. I'm just going to continue to go back and forth as I peel the backing. What I want to do is go right down the middle and then come over to the sides and I'll just continue Removing that backing. You don't want to get any air bubbles in this, so I always like to keep the backing on until I'm totally ready to release it. And I find if I can position it first, like I did with the corner here, that I'm usually very successful. So I'm just going to take my burnishing stick here, and that comes right in your package. So that's something that's provided. I'm just going to come along and burnish it really well. You want to make sure that you're covering every inch of the transfer so that when you peel back it's going to stick to your substrate. Now when you put a base coat on, whether it's a primer or Dixie Belle chalk paint, you have to make sure that it's totally dry before you do this. As a matter of fact, it likely won't stick unless the paint is totally dry. I'm going to start with the first corner I laid out. As you can see, that's lifting away. As you're peeling this, if you notice anything that isn't sticking down, just lay it back down and go over it with your burnisher here. That's looking beautiful. Okay, I don't know if the camera picks this up, but you'll notice that I do have a bit of a white border at the top here. I might just um, trim it out with some gold paint because I am going to be using some gold on this. And that'll be a new product for me. I haven't tried Dixie Belle's Moonshine Metallics, so that'll be fun. We're almost there. And there we go. So I'm going to set this aside for now and we're going to move on to the actual mirror part. I decided to put the mirror onto a Lazy Susan so that I can turn it and have access to all the sides. Because this vanity mirror is made from mahogany, I'm going to be putting on a coat of primer. This is Boss. It uh, blocks odor stains and stops bleed through. So I'll give it a good shake. I'm going to put one coat on, let it dry an hour, then put a second coat and let it dry overnight before I put the top coat on. I'm using my favorite mini angle brush, which I just spritz with a little bit of water. and I'm just going to start brushing it on. I'll just get the sides here. Now after that's on, I'm just going to take some long strokes with the grain. Same here, I'll just neaten that up. Missed a little bit there. Now I can move on. Now you can also spray this primer. I might just try that later because the weather is gorgeous today. And I might just try spraying the rest of this, um, like the bottom piece of this mirror. And again, I'm just gonna take some long strokes. Same with here. Now the thing I love about this mini angle brush is it gets into these tight spaces. 
So you can see there's hardly any paint there to bleed through that tape. It really allows you to target that one area. I'm just going sideways to get it on initially so that I can get it over this curve. And again, I'm going to take just the point of that angle brush to get that edge. And I'll come back with longer strokes. Okay, I'm going to let that dry for an hour. I'm going to come back, do a second coat, and then um, this is going to need 24 hours of dry time before we can put our uh, paint color on top of this. Haven't yet decided what that paint color is going to be, so you'll just have to wait. Don't forget to um, close up your lid so that your primer doesn't dry out. And I'm going to go wash out my brush. I hand brushed two coats of gloss on the front side of this mirror, and now we're going to spray the back. We're just getting set up here, and my husband's going to give it a spray. Along with that, we're going to spray the bottom half of the mirror, and we, as you can see, we just gave it a light scuff sand. Here's a tip for you when you have to paint objects such as these knobs here. These knobs allow our mirror to swivel. So we've just created a hole with a pair of scissors in the box. We taped off where we don't want the spray. We're just going to pop it in and spray it. Whenever I'm deciding on a paint color for my projects, um, Dixie Bell has a color lab online system where you can punch in the colors that you have and mix them any way you want and it gives you a great idea of how your color will, will turn out. But the best thing to test the theory is to um, just put primer on a paint stick here like I've done and I'm just going to take a little bit of each of these colors. I'll just dab that on, dab on a little bit of fluff, and I'm just going to mix them. Now the two colors I'm using here are the golf and fluff. This first one here is just straight up the golf. After letting the paint dry and applying some moonshine metallic over each color, I've decided I really like the combination of um, the golf and fluff. I'm going to mix them both together in this separate container. So I'm going to add about 50-50. Now I don't think it's going to take much to cover this, so I'm just going to add approximately 50% of each color. Just going to wipe the paint away from the lid so that I can get it open again. Just be sure that when you're mixing a color that you have enough to complete your project. And uh, Dixie Bell has um, a paint coverage chart on the website that you can refer to. And I think that this is going to be more than enough. So let's just take the paint stick once again. I'm just going to rub some of this over here. And it's just a little deeper than what I mixed up initially, but I think I'm liking that better. So that is really pretty. So I'll be back to paint. I'm just going to get set up. I'm going to get a paintbrush and we'll be ready to go.
I have Dixie Belle's Color Lab open on my iPad here, and I just want to show you what the golf and fluff look like on screen um, in ratio of 50 50. So, as you can see, it's just slightly different from my actual real life sample here. It does give you a good indication, but it's always best, like I said, to do a sample on top of your primer. So, let's see what it looks like in real life. I'm starting with the mirror and I've got it propped up and on my Lazy Susan. Once again, I'm going to be using my Dixie Belle Mini. I'm just going to give it a misting to get it wet. Not wet, but just damp. I'll just work that into the bristles. And I'll start by just getting some of the paint off this mixing stick here. Okay, I'll set that aside. We'll wash that later. And let's just get some of this on. Gorgeous. I'm really loving how that looks. Just get some on the sides here. If you find your paint is drying, you can mist directly on the paint itself or you can go ahead and mist your brush. I actually do prefer to mist my brush because I feel that it gives me better control. I find that when I mist on the piece itself I can get paint drips and I don't want to see paint drips. And we'll continue on to the next section now, Dixie Belle Chalk Mineral Paint will be dry within 15 to 20 minutes, so I can move on to next steps rather quickly. I'll just go ahead and mist my brush a little. I'll get the sides here. Now, on the sides, just want to show you I'm starting in the middle I'm dragging the brush up and then I'm gonna go back and do the edges and that's so that I can prevent paint drips underneath that lip or at least try to and again the thing I love most about this Dixie Belle angle brush is that I can get right into the narrowest of areas with the bristles so I'm just gonna take some long strokes to finish that off and move on to the next section. Now once this dries, I am planning on putting some Moonshine Metallics over this blue in a few areas. So because I'm gonna have to tape it up, instead of waiting my typical 15 to 20 minutes, I might just leave it overnight so that I can use um, frog tape on it. I really don't wanna be lifting any of the paint I just laid down. So it's always a good idea to give it more time than you think it's going to need. Lighter colors, in some instances you're going to find that it's going to need two coats. So I'm not going to actually know if this needs two coats until it's fully dry. Sometimes it's really deceiving. You can look at it wet and think, yep, that's going to need another coat. But then you come back to it after it's dry and it's perfectly fine or what you're going to be doing. I'm loving the coverage that I'm getting over the Dixie Belle boss here. And again, to finish, I'll take just a few long strokes here to smooth it out. Okay, so that coat is done. I'm going to allow that to dry. I'm going to set it aside. Then I'm going to bring over my other piece and I'm going to give that a coat of this color also. And here's the base of the mirror. Try to start off in the middle and work your way out to the edges and that way you're not going to get drips over the edge. Just going to give a light mist of water and then I'm going to smooth out my paint. Try not to overwork it too much.
Another tip is to turn the item as you need to. So I'm just turning it around so that I can access the back of it. Now I can actually see what I'm doing back here. Now since this is the back, I am not going to paint the back of these um, mirror harps just yet because I want to ensure that I'm going to have enough paint to do everything else with two coats if I have to. So the back of that is done. Once again, I'm going to turn this around. Now I'm going to start with the mirror harps here. And the wood on these harps is actually quite dinged and textured. So I'm never gonna get a really smooth finish on this. I'm just gonna smooth it out as best I can. And again, the tip of my Dixie Belle mini brush here really gets into the crevices. I just love it. It's a practical all-purpose brush. And you don't want to glop the paint onto things like these details because you're just going to see it. It's just going to get stuck and you're just going to end up with big lumps, which is not what you want. Now we're going to get into those details a little later on too with some of the um, Moonshaw Metallic. If you find you still have a few white areas in these details here, you can just touch that up with a Dixie Belle artist brush. I've got plenty of paint left to do a second coat. Now that the first coat is dry, I'm going to add a second coat and then we can start our gold. Now that I have two coats on the area that I want coverage on, I'm going to take a detail brush and I'm going to brush these areas with the Moonshine Metallics. So I'm using a color that's called Gold Digger and I have a bit of t-shirt cloth here just in case I get anything on the face of this. I can just wipe it right off with some water. So you just need a steady hand and a good detail brush like I have here. And you're going to just going to brush it right along. Use your pinky to help steady your hand. You just need to lean on something. I've got just a tiny bit of paint here that I don't want on the face. I'm just going to wipe that right back and it wipes right back with no problem at all. Okay, so you get the gist of this. I'm going to continue doing this. I think what I'll do is I'll lay this flat on its back so that it's easier for me to see and paint. When I lay this piece on its back, it's actually much easier for me to paint into these crevices because I'm letting gravity do all the work. You do have to do it in stages because you don't want so much paint on the brush that it's going to ooze out of these crevices. Just swipe your brush back and forth so that you get even coverage. I went ahead and painted Moonshine Metallic on the inside of the mirror harp and now I'm taping for the squares on the mirror itself and I just want to point out that you have to make a release cut in order to get over the curve 
and into this corner. And that's your starting point. Then I'm gonna measure over two inches and put another piece of tape, just like I've done right over here. Now, in order to get my measurements here, I'm just measuring over two inches. I'm taking the chalk pencil and I'm making a little tick mark. Then I'm gonna take my tape and I finished painting today, so I'm using a low tack tape here so that I don't pull up my paint. I'm just gonna position over the markings and then I'm just gonna burnish that. Now I'll come over, I'll measure two inches from this side. Since that will be my next piece. I've got two little tick marks there with the chalk. And I'm using this mechanical chalk pencil, which I use a lot, so it's really indispensable for me in my craft studio. And again, I'll just pull another piece of tape, and I'm gonna position on the left side of the line this time. Just have to account sometimes for the thickness of the chalk. And again, I'll measure over another two inches, put a tick mark. Tick mark here. Take out a length of tape, and this time I'm going to position it on the left hand side because that's the area that I'm going to be painting. Now, as you're doing this, occasionally you just want to be sure that you've got a two inch space in between your tape just so that you're not getting off kilter here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of tape and I'm not going to go right around the edge. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom right here so that I can't paint past this point. And don't forget to burnish your edges. Now that the top and bottom is taped up, I'm just gonna take a touch of the same color paint and I'm just gonna run it along the edges to seal it. And that way I won't get bleed through. Anything wet that hits this tape is automatically going to activate the adhesive here. So as this dries, like I said, it's going to seal the adhesive that's on the tape. And anything that does bleed under is going to be the same color blue. So there, I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to apply my gold. I'm ready to apply my second coat of the Moonshine Metallic and I'm using Gold Digger here. And what I'm applying it with is um, Dixie Belle's Artist Brush, the biggest one here. Just gonna take a bit of paint from the lid. And just brush it on. Now what you wanna do is you wanna go from the inside out so that you don't catch the edges. You don't wanna get any paint onto the face. I have a feeling I'm gonna need probably at least one more coat after this, so that's three in total if you want a solid look. And again, when you get into these larger areas here, just gonna go from the middle out to the edge. So I think you get the idea. I'm gonna finish this off camera and we'll be back for next steps. When you're brushing on your Moonshine Metallics, just ensure that you're finishing the brush strokes all in the same direction. So in this instance, I'm gonna go up and down as opposed to side to side. Okay, so let's turn this around and we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. If you want to use less coats of the Moonshine Metallic, you can paint a similar color yellow underneath in chalk paint, and that way you don't have to put as many coats on, because right now I'm still seeing some of the blue. Granted, it's only my first coat, but even on the mirror base itself, after two coats you can see the blue coming through. So. Um, if you have yellow, feel free to use it instead. 
as the base underneath. Try to smooth it out as best you can. And then before you finish off, just eyeball that you've got all the corners. I'm just going to flip this around and see how that's looking. And I can see that I missed right here. So just make sure that you've covered all of the blue. So I'm going to allow that to dry. I'm going to come back and do a second coat, possibly even a third. And then we can tape our sides. I forgot that I've got these holes in here that I have to fill. So what I did was I cut off just lengths. I stuck this dowel down into each hole, cut it off, and you can't cut it flush. You do need to leave a little bit of space so that you can get some wood filler in there. And I'm just using this water-based wood filler. I'm just get, actually taking a little bit with my finger. And I've taped around the edge so that I can't get it onto my painted wood. And I'm just going to work it down into the hole around the dowel. Make sure it's filled right to the top. Now I've got tape on here because I've got a painted finish and I don't want to mar that. So just ensure that it's perfectly flush with the tape and that's good enough. Now once your filler's on and you're satisfied that it's flush, you can just lift your tape off around that hole. Now I will have a little bit here to sand away and that's okay. Just ensure as you peel this that you're leaving your wood filler intact. So try to get at this at an angle. And there you go. So I'm just going to finish removing this tape and then we're going to move on to finishing our Moonshine Metallic on the front of the mirror. I've got three coats of the Moonshine Metallics on here now and it's time to reveal it. So when you're lifting uh, tape, be sure to angle it at 45 degrees so that you don't get tear out. And as you can see, um, my little trick of taking a little bit of the base color and painting it on before I do the Moonshine Metallics leaves a perfectly crisp edge. There's absolutely no paint bleed whatsoever underneath this tape. It's looking pretty amazing. So once this comes off, I'm going to do the sides. Now that my low tack tape is on, I'm going to take a paintbrush and I've got an artist brush here and I'm just going to brush on a very light coat of the blue right along the edges here just to seal that. That way if anything's going to bleed under the tape, it's going to be the same blue color that you see right next door here just taking some water and spreading that out really thin. Now according to my husband, he says that this particular tape, I'm using frog tape, has this edge seal technology and all you need is some moisture under there. So what he uses is water. But he's using latex paint and he's painting walls typically when he does that. So. I'm not going to take the chance on this. I'm going to test out that theory on something that I'm not working on, just a piece of scrap, and I'll see if that works. It would be interesting if all it takes is a little bit of water to seal that edge, because then you don't have to apply the paint. And again, all you need is just a really, really thin layer here. So I'm just spreading it out with some water. Spread it out really thin. Because I don't need another coat of paint here. I don't want to layer on so much that it's it becomes noticeably thicker than the paint right beside it. Nothing more satisfying than peeling off the tape. How cool is that? And that's a wrap. Head on over to Tea and Forget Me Nots to check out Rachel's mirror too. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in some of the products that we used, I'll leave links down in the description. Don't forget to subscribe.